Okay, so we finally got our way back to playing as Zadan and his group. And it's been since the end of Disc 1 that we've got a chance to see what happened to these guys. It turns out they did, in fact, survive their encounter with Beatrix, the Queen, and that mystery dude dressed like a woman. And I'm just here screwing around with all of my uh, inventory stuff. Something unfortunate happened while I was recording this episode a while back. The audio, for some reason, for my narration, did not get recorded as I played the game. Perhaps I just didn't have a setting right in Bandy Camera or something like that. Probably it, so I have to go and add this in post-gameplay, which is the same thing I've done in the previous two episodes. That may have been obvious or not, I don't know. Okay, we have to go find our way to Clara, which is a city over in this other direction here. Well, not this way. Over here. Clara is essentially a tree with a group of the same uh, race of people that populated Bermica living in. The tree is surrounded eternally by a large sandstorm, which prevents anybody from gaining access to it. There was a time when the people of Ermica and the people of Clara were the same culture, all that kind of stuff, but sometime a while ago, I'm not entirely sure how long ago, that kind of thing I don't think was revealed in the game. The two cultures separated, and they were separated to such an extent by this sandstorm and all that, even though you know, positionally they're not really all that far away from each other. The sandstorm prevented them from interacting, so it's essentially like they are aware of each other's existence, but they don't interact and they don't see each other. In fact, I don't think there's been actual contact between two civilizations for quite some time. Something that they'd been working with for a while in the Final Fantasy series during the PlayStation 1 era was placing 3D characters or polygonal characters over top of a static 2D background. It's something they did back in Final Fantasy 7, which allowed the backgrounds to have a whole lot more detail and really gave people the impression that the game really looked fantastic back in its time. Resident Evil did the same thing. But the fact that the background was static was a hugely limiting factor. Now you see in this game, this was actually like the third game in the series that was produced for the PlayStation 1, so the developers got better and better at doing this kind of thing. So even though it's still a static background, they got quite a bit better at presenting it like it was more than it was. For example, that sort of panning down the tree and then it stops over the top of the characters. It doesn't really look that good on modern TVs because everything is expected to be at a higher resolution and all that kind of stuff. But back in the late 90s, or actually this was early 2000s, wasn't it? The average person just had a CRT TV with a PlayStation 1 hooked up to it through RCA components or something like that. So, Everything was a little bit blurrier and all that kind of stuff. So that kind of effect that they were doing really looked pretty good. In fact, it looks pretty good here. The background is static in the sense that you can't truly interact with it. But it is moving. Look, the sandstorms are raging behind there. The sand's moving down there. It's probably only like five or six frames of animation or something like that there. But it is enough to give the impression that the background is active. Now, one of the reasons why the games ended up taking up multiple discs back in this time was because of these static backgrounds. They go and they... Every single one you record, every single one you have in the game, has to be, like, rendered and stored as a picture file on the disc. And then that's loaded and moved in a new area. That's why some of these loading screens take a surprisingly long time. 
to load up. And anytime you have a different camera angle within the same scene, that separate camera angle has to be pre-rendered and then stuck into the... Ooh, we got white wind. Nice. Has to be pre-rendered and then saved onto the disk and loaded up at the time that it's needed. So the size of the disk, or the size of the game on the disk, can balloon up, rather. Uh, massively, which is why you don't see that many frames of animation on this type of, uh, on this type of thing. So, it's used fair, somewhat sparingly, I mean, multiple frames of animation. I'm not going to do auto potion. Multiple frames of animation are used in a lot of the backgrounds in this game, but you can't use that many frames because it would, it would be too much data. And when they moved to the PlayStation 2, they moved to a... You, most of the areas in Final Fantasy X were real-time, generated polygonally with texture maps and all that kind of stuff. There were a couple of pre-rendered backgrounds, but you really wouldn't notice it too much unless you were looking for it. Just for static areas, they wanted to have high def, high uh, resolution, all that kind of stuff. High level of detail. Smack that guy in the sand, and then you can hit the red berry floating around in his chest. I am not going to use auto potion with any of my characters. I, I mean, I made sure I got the ability because it can be pretty useful. What happens with auto potion is when your characters attack, they automatically just throw a potion into the air to cure themselves. The reason why I'm not going to use that right now is because your characters will have a tendency to throw up a potion every time they get hit. Like they get hit, take 10 HP worth of damage. They instantly just throw potion in the air, which can, like, let's say you only have, like, a really high, a really high quality potion that's the only potion you have, like, you have a bunch of high potions or X potions, and you don't have any regular potions, so have 10 HP worth of damage, and your character suddenly throws an X potion in the air to cure himself of that 10 HP damage, it's like, oh my god, I just wasted that. And that's where the challenge in these types of games come from. It's not like a Twitch-based game where you go and, like, I can just move quicker and I can aim better and I can line up a headshot better than the character on the other side of the screen. It's all about resource management and planning your strategy and long, figuring out the best way of doing things, not necessarily the easiest. I don't know if there's anything else to do in here. Like a lot of the... Oh, that's... Needle Fork. That is a weapon, like all forks, for Quina. Ah, no. No, we, the Mithril Fork that we already have is better. And they both have the High Tide ability, so it doesn't matter. Oh, a Moogle. The random battle element is something that you don't really see much anymore because people, for the most part, regard it as a sort of relic of sort of the olden times of video games where, I mean, it made sense back in, technologically it made sense to do this kind of thing back in the old NES era because what this, a lot of people say is the only reason why turn-based battles ever existed was because technological constraints prevented them from going and doing real-time battles in the old NES games, like, stuff like that. The random battles were an element of that. You can't render a whole lot of characters on the screen at once wandering around in the world. So, why not just have, when you're in a certain area, have battles randomly occur? Makes sense. It doesn't, you don't see it too much now, because people have gotten tired of it. I mean, as a game mechanic, it works just fine. But in a modern game, people are like, ah, crap, I just want to wander around and not want to worry about suddenly the screen flashing a different color or wiping away or shattering or whatever, and then I have to go through a battle which may potentially take, like, several minutes. Like, this fight could have been over quicker had I wanted it to. But especially in earlier Final Fantasy games, you'd get into, like, some random battle, and holy crap, suddenly it takes, like, half a frickin' hour to get to this fight. But realistically, a fight 
on, like, say, the earlier Final Fantasy game, which might take, like, a minute to complete. The problem is, then, you go and take another ten steps and get thrown into another, another fight. What happens, though, if, say, you went in the wrong direction on the map, and you didn't go, just go straight to the direction you want, you ran into a dead end? Then you'd have to turn around, go back, retreading across the areas you've already been, potentially getting into another fight. It kind of, like, dissuades you from exploring the map. And it's a shame, because exploring the map is really the kind of thing that you want to do in this kind of game. Oh, letter. You want to go and explore the map, find those treasure chests, find those little storyline parts that flesh out the game. But unfortunately, the the real not oh, damn it <laughs> random battle element kind of throws that up. Modern games, even if they have like a turn-based battle thing, tend to have like enemies appearing on the game map and they run up and touch you, sort of like Earthbound. Flame staff. I'm not gonna equip this yet because I haven't gotten all my abilities yet. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. I do like this uh, Moogle mail system thing. Oh, new enemies. Carrion worm. I do like this Moogle mail system because, although like it is this goofy little mini game, and you don't really have to do it. It does give a sort of, like, other character perspective on the events going on in the game. Like, oh, the queen has invaded this, or blah blah blah, and this place is on fire. Stuff you've already seen. You're not really gaining any hints about what's to come. You're just getting a little snippet of somebody else's perspective into the world and the events that are going on. Moving on. Uh, I think I cut the camera up here a little bit, and then retreated to make sure I gained some new abilities. So, if you see a jump in the gameplay, then that's the reason why. Well, I mean, I'm... I do tend to cut out the battles against enemies that we've already faced before, because no one wants to see me just endlessly battle the same enemies over and over again. I did this one because I didn't manage to use the heat command on it. <sighs> Damn, Zidane's attack power is too strong. For some reason, Vivi's is surprisingly strong. Trouble juice. <laughs> oh, he's crying. Ordinarily, like, I didn't get the ability. But ordinarily, the way I try to get somebody like Quinna to lower the enemy's HP lower enough that he can use the E command is by having lower strength characters like. Oh, there was the jump. Like Vivi and Frey to go and damage the thing. Lower an HP enough, but not killing them for a Quinta to be able to use the E command. Yes, yeah, cost life when KO'd. You have to cast it beforehand. I, it's not really working for me too much here because the, um, well. For some reason, Vivi's attacking better than I would have expected him to. I'm expecting a black mage using physical attacks to only be producing like 60, 70 HP. Like if I were to, if Dagger were in the group and she were attacking, she'd be very limited in her attack power too, even more so than Vivi. But she's generally not a, an attacking character. I mean, it, it's, it must, it's probably a better thing that Vivi is able to do some approaching reasonable the damage with physical attacks, just in case I need him to. But for the moment, it's not really working in my favor. Alright. Mithril Gloves. I don't know who can equip that here. I don't think anybody here can equip that. Oh, no. Pray again. But I already have him equipped, so... Whatever. That's another thing that they did in this game that you didn't see in some of the earlier games. And that was have different equipment for different characters. Like, some of the lighter armor and all that kind of stuff Sedan can wear, and then the heavier equipment is something like Steiner would wear, or some of the, the larger, like, physical characters like Freya can. 
can wear some of Steiner's stuff, that kind of thing. So, like, I just can't go into a store and, like, oh, these mithril gauntlets increase defense by 10 points. I'll buy enough of these to fit out my entire group. You have to put a little more effort into it. Alright, I think I'm good here. Uh, uh, get out of that, get out of that, get out of that, get out of that. Gotta jump a bunch of times. Depending on which direction you're looking at when he gets out, he should jump in different directions. Now, it is possible to sort of walk between these things like I did just there. But I think maybe you would want to get sucked down into it once. Just to fight the thing that you would fight when you do it. <laughs> There's another treasure chest over there, but I don't know how to get it. Okay, here's our fight. And it is... Oh, uh, the scorpion. You can actually fight these earlier in the game if you want. Like, you want to gain whatever it is ability that they have. Head over, like, northeastern, I think, or northwestern of Clara. There's a beach, and you'll fight these things on the beach. I fought a few of them before heading to Clara. Cut the camera and fought a few of those things. And... So I already got what I need out of these things. I can just kill them. But they are tough little bastards, so I'll be careful. Of them. Dead. Levels are coming in quick. Okay, you can be careful and walk slowly through, but I don't know how to get up here. I can't seem to do that. Maybe I can make sure I jump proper, the proper location as I'm doing it, but, you know, it's... I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with the sand pools over on the right, but I didn't bother figuring it out. So, I'm just going to get out of here. Can't be wasting all day screwing around with sand pools. Now this one I sort of had to fall into. So make sure you jump out in the right direction and you'll hop out on the side you need, like I didn't do there. Huh. There we go. And... Oh, crap. What do we got? Nope. This ladder is pretty much the end of the dungeon, so I'm just going to cut it out here.